One question I get asked a lot is how do you write a song or even start the creative process? In this video, I'm gonna break down that little piece of music you heard at the beginning. Talk about how to get inspired, how to use music theory to get what's in your mind onto the guitar, recording, and more. Now, to be honest with you, I had no concept about songwriting or any of this stuff in my first band. I thought guitar souls were just about playing pentatonic scales as fast as possible, which is what got me kicked out. You can start to dial in your strategy with my free guitar newsletter that gets you tabs, tips, and tricks to really implement a comprehensive strategy, you're going to want to score my full music theory course down below. That's going to take you from zero to hero. Keys, chords, scales, how to be an artist and translate what's in here through your instrument. Step one in the creative process for me is to get inspired. Now, a lot of people think you just have to wait until lightning strikes for this to happen, but it's actually something you can manually force and induce at will. The way that I force creative inspiration is the drone. The drone is just a sustained pitch, and what it does is sort of uh, forcibly induce a meditative state. This causes you to reflect and to kind of conjure up inspiring ideas just naturally. So you can literally go to YouTube and type in something like D-Drone. That's what I used for this video. Now, I wrote this song on St. Patrick's Day, so the inspiration was kind of, I was going with like an Irish vibe. And I decided all this before I even really sat down to play, right? So I had a concept in my mind. I know a lot of people think music theory is rocket science, but that's missing the point. Really, theory is just a shortcut to get the sounds that you want. And I knew that Irish songs tend to use Dorian scales. Uh, Mixolydian is another popular choice, but I went with Dorian because I like the minor quality. So I sat down, started to improvise to the drone, and then recorded a short video. Now you have the seed of your idea documented. It's not going anywhere. But let's be honest, it's easy to forget things. I've done that many times. I, I promise, promise, promise you, you want to capture an idea in the moment through some sort of uh, means. Like don't just plan on remembering it. Either use a voice memo, a video is better because then you can see what you're doing with your fingers, something. Don't just let it get lost to the void. So this is the Dorian scale I was talking about. It sounds like this. This raised six degree here gives the minor quality a, a tinge of major. And that's what's really special about this mode because Irish, you know, theme stuff, it, it's it's like a good time. It's party music. St. Patrick's Day is an uplifting holiday. Everybody goes out and drinks green beer. There's leprechauns dancing around. Who knows, you might find a pot of gold at the end of a rainbow. The chord progressions are that go along with modes are the things that nobody knows about, but these are the most powerful songwriting tools. So if you select a mode, to write a song with and you don't know what the harmony is or how to derive you know chords from the scale you're totally screwed so the chord progression for dorian is amazing it sounds like this you basically have minor one to major four or e minor to a absolutely incredible it just sort of conjures up like medieval images to me i feel like i'm running through the forest chasing fair maidens to a castle tower whatever it is right the point is is you want to have some kind of mental imagery that goes along with your music that's going to enrich it going to flesh out your ideas and make them more accessible to others how am i coming up with those chords well uh this is the way the dorian mode is used in music you can hear this in countless examples in the music of Pink Floyd and a lot of other bands, but essentially the way you select chords from a scale is by playing every other note. So you got E, skip this next note, which is F sharp. We don't want that. Here is the next note we're going to play in the chord, which is G. Skip the next note, and then you have B. So that's E, G, and B, which creates an E minor chord. This is the way tertian harmony or harmony in thirds is constructed by playing every other note of a scale. So don't just think that scales are, are scales, right? I mean, it goes way deeper than that. Chords are really what allows you to write songs with scales. So once you have your recorded video, right, you captured your idea, what's the next step in the process? Well, for me, 
it's to transcribe what I did in Guitar Pro. Now, this is not going to be a step that beginners will be comfortable with, and that's fine. Uh, but for those of you that are more interested in serious composition and songwriting, this is a great way to do things. So I transcribe what I wrote, and that's what I did here in Guitar Pro. Let's listen to a little bit of it. got the bend in there that was a little bit tricky maybe you're not gonna nail all the rhythms and everything but just do the best you can it's really valuable to be able to document and write out what you're doing as a musician my theory professor in college used to say write it sing it say it play it that write it part is the first thing and it's extremely important just to organize your conceptualization of a musical idea little things like getting you know this chug rhythm uh, that actually took me a second. I thought I was doing like some normal chugs, but as it turns out, uh, it was a triplet. You know, the first two notes are tied right here, and then, uh, you know, you hit this one. So it's, it's a bit of a unique sort of rhythm. So the good part about being able to transcribe your idea is then you have the MIDI data. So in Guitar Pro, which is the program I'm using here, if you go to Export, you can see that you have all these different options. MIDI is one of them. So MIDI is like a universal format. You can import it into any DAW or digital audio workstation. And then you have uh, the notes that you played. You can assign those to different instruments and make a track. So that's what I did. I imported the MIDI file, which is right here, into Logic Pro. That's the DAW that I use. If you use uh, Apple computers, you can use Logic Pro. I mean, there's a ton of free DAWs out there like Reaper, Audacity, and they all pretty much work the same way. So I just dragged this file in here and that gives me something to work with. I just have it signed to the piano here, but you could assign it to any instrument. Um, you know, the point at this stage is not to have a finished product. It's just to uh, have something to work with. The basic tracks are the main point here. So basic tracks are drums and bass. And the reason they're called basic tracks is because they form the foundation for a good recording. You always do the drums first because that's like the rhythmic compass for everything else. Don't start with the drums and you record guitar first. You'll notice that uh, you're timing isn't going to be as good in the overall uh, presentation of the song. So using Easy Drummer, which is a plug-in here, uh, I, I manually program every single note out. There's loops and stuff you can use, but for me, I like, you know, the specific hits to be in, in certain places, and it just sounds better. So here's how the drums sound. You can sort of hear that uh, triplet groove and vibe. symbols there. This is really important when you're writing drums just to get a groove. A groove is the main thing. Toms, and you're done. After you get the drums, then you write some bass. And I'm doing the same thing with bass. I'm just programming the bass. I'm too lazy to actually play it in. I use this plugin called Moto Bass. So with the drums and bass together, we've got this. Sticking to a lot of roots in the bass. And then actually there's no bass here to build dynamics up. Back in the mix. Once you get that solid foundation with the basic tracks, then it's time for our favorite part, right? <laughs> Guitars. The greatest instrument of all. You see I have one track hand hard right, one track hand hard left, and even a little bit going up the middle here for emphasis. Double tracking makes everything sound thicker, 
more depth. So I start this piece, which I'm calling I am Leprechaun. I'm not really a leprechaun, or, or am I? <laughs> I'll leave that for you to decide. But I start with basically a drone in the first bar. That's what this is, is just setting the tonic foundation. I'm saying, hey man, that's the one chord right there. Make it nice and clear and obvious. Then in bar two, we have this little scale run. That's just kind of going like up and down the Dorian scale. I'm not even hitting the Dorian note yet. That comes in bar three. So in bar three, I'm basically uh, ringing out this D. There's the magic note, that raised sixth. And then I'm hitting the third. So you sort of get this bleeding effect. It's like a Lydian, G Lydian sound, really. G Lydian would be the chords G and then A with a G in the bass. Being aware of these mini modal moments is crucial. That's where the feeling is. That's where the emotions are. Each of these modes have specific vibes that go along with them. In the next bar, we have these uh, interesting chords here. It's just a dyad, a major seventh interval, which I love that sound when it goes to the A sus after that. Sort of like a little melody line. I believe that the, the riff lord's biggest power is to be able to weave a melody into the riff, right? Think about like Iron Man. That's a melody. And we're going to talk about uh, melody here in a couple bars. So then we're back to the chugs, right? Let's board the choo-choo chug train and chug it out a little bit more. The melody comes back in again, that, that line that we played. And then comes the C word, counterpoint. And counterpoint is one of the most useful things you can learn as a guitar player to write songs and really to improve your riffs with. Instead of just moving power chords all over the place with parallel motion so you're not changing the form, Counterpoint allows you to develop a more interesting line. So here in uh, this bar right here, let me highlight it. This bar is a counterpoint. E even actually really these two bars are counterpoint, which just means I'm playing two melodies at once. See how there's, you know, two numbers together. That's all counterpoint is. But realize that you have that option. You don't have to just play this power chord shape all over the place, right? You can actually, if you want to do like just a basic Iron Maiden progression, E, D, C, or it's really E minor, right? E minor, D, C. That could be made more interesting by using contrary motion. So there I, I mean, it's, it's not that crazy, it's just uh, you're, you're shifting shapes, so you, you can't just use that one shape the whole time, right? These are different shapes, but it's still outlining the same chord tones. For this little mini bridge, we have a hybrid picking section. I'm calling this 7-4 time, but uh, you could think of it as, as uh, divided up into 4 and 3 if you wanted. Time signatures aren't real, as Adam Neely has stated. It's just a matter of how you feel and divide up time. Hybrid picking is just when you use your... Well, I'm using my flipper finger, right? My bird. So that's what hybrid picking is. It's not just using the pick you're using your fingers too and that's what this phrase is all about here after that i just go back into a previous phrase that i stated earlier and we're out now if you're not familiar with the dorian scale let's practice it a little bit Starting on the A string, you've got 7, 9, 10. D string, 7, 9, 11. And then 7 and 9 on the G string. We're going to have 8 beats of count in. Then we're going to play the scale. You ready? Here we go. One 
more time. Now let's practice the chords in E Dorian. So I've got E minor, A sus to A, and then back to E minor. Really the core of the Dorian progression is just E minor and A, but that sus is quite nice. So let's do another eight bar count in, and then we're gonna rep these chords. Here we go. So there's a few exercises to get you primed to write something using the magical Dorian mode. Up your songwriting skills and music theory knowledge at my Patreon page below. The best part about Patreon is the community. There's other people there on Discord who are practicing just like you and trying to reach the next level. We're sharing our songs, giving each other positive critical feedback so that we can all reach level 666 together fast. Ha 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 ha.